Hello guys, today we're going to be taking a look at this cool integral. Uh, we're going to solve it using two methods. One of them is the Laplace transform, and the other one is by converting it into another well-known integral. And obviously that's not exactly an orthodox method, but that's definitely a viable method for solving a lot of different integrals. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and solve it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is prove that the Laplace transform of f of t over t equals the integral from s to infinity of f of u du, where f of s equals the Laplace transform of f of t. And obviously this is going to be pretty good because we can just apply this twice to pretty basic functions because we have that t squared on the bottom. So this is a pretty simple proof from s to infinity of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative ut, because we have f of u instead of f of s, f of t, dt, du. So we're gonna exchange the order of integration, and we're gonna bring f of t to the outside here, because f of t is constant with respect to u, right? So it doesn't have to be in that integral. Then we're gonna go ahead and integrate, so we're gonna end up with 0 to infinity f of t times uh, negative e to the negative ut over t infinity and s. So obviously at infinity it's just going to disappear and at s it's just going to become the normal Laplace transform, right? So we can go right here and we'll put s right there and that negative sign is going to disappear because we're subtracting it, right? dt. And this is just the definition of the Laplace transform of f of t over t. So this rule applies. Now let's go ahead and apply it to our integral. So we're going to start with the Laplace transform of 1 minus cosine t equals 1 over s minus s over s squared plus 1, right? Then that means that the Laplace transform of 1 minus cosine t over t equals the integral from s to infinity of 1 over u minus u over u squared plus 1 du, which equals um, ln u minus 1 half ln square root u squared plus 1 evaluated at infinity and s. And so the way we're going to do this is, oh, yeah, so this 1 half turns into the square root. And then we can combine the lns here into one big natural log. All right, so at infinity, this is going to be ln1 because we have a first order and first order right here, and so that's just going to disappear. Uh, we can do that limit if you want, but that's pretty simple, so I'm going to leave it out. And then at s, it's just going to be negative ln s over squared s squared plus 1, so we're going to flip it again. All right, and so you'll notice here if you plug in s equals 0, it's not going to work, and that's because the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine t over t actually diverges because 1 minus cosine t sort of just oscillates around 1 half, and it doesn't actually go low enough for that integral to converge. But we can still use this Laplace transform and then apply this our little trick again in order to get the Laplace transform of 1 minus cosine t over t squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to apply our formula. Uh, we already know that this is u ln u minus u because um, that's a pretty common integral, so I'll bring that to the outside. And then we're going to do integration by parts for this next one. So plus u over 2 ln u squared plus 1, right? And then when we differentiate, we're going to end up with negative the integral. I'm just doing this indefinitely, and then I'll plug in the bounds later of u squared over u squared plus 1. So for this, we're going to add 1 and subtract 1. And so this is just going to become u, right? And this one is going to become negative arctangent of u. So we're going to end up with, and this is evaluated at infinity and then at s. So let's go ahead and cancel this with this. And in order to do this limit, we're going to have to combine these. So we're going to end up with u ln u squared plus 1 square root over 
u plus tangent of u evaluated at an infinity in s. So at infinity, we're going to have pi over 2. And then this is just going to be an infinity um, times 0 situation. So we do have to do that limit. I'll do that over here. I'm going to split up this a lot. So we're going to have a 1 over u and then 1 half ln u squared plus 1 minus ln u. Differentiate. We're going to end up with u over u squared plus 1 minus 1 over u minus 1 over u squared. Multiply by u squared in the top and the bottom. So this is going to disappear. We're going to end up with u cubed and then u right here. And then we're going to put this all over a common denominator. So we're going to end up with limit as u goes to infinity. Uh, negative, then u cubed minus u cubed minus 1, right? Just from this, putting it on the common denominator of u squared plus 1. And of course, these are going to cancel. This is going to cancel, and it's just going to be the limit as u goes to infinity of 1 over u. Oh, this should be, yeah, 1 over u squared plus 1, which just goes to 0. So that bit's done for. We finish that upper bound, and for the lower bound, inverse tangent is just going to be 0 right? And then we're just going to have negative. Actually, instead of the negative sign, we'll just flip this on its head again, right? So that's going to be um, plus s ln s over square root s squared plus 1. All right. And in order to evaluate our it original integral, which was the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine x over x squared dx, we need to evaluate this at s equals 0. So how we're going to do that is, of course, um, the pi over 2 is just going to stay. And then we just need to show that this limit, I'm going to tell you it's going to go to 0, but we'll just evaluate it super quick. So we're going to have limit as s goes to 0. Since this is a 0 times infinity situation, we're going to use the Hopital's rule. So I'm going to split that this upper, or actually, so first uh, we have the limit of s times ln s minus 1 half s ln s squared plus 1. So this one is just 0 times 0. So this one's going to disappear. But this one on the right, on the left is what we're trying to prove. So we have ln s over 1 minus s differentiate top and bottom, 1 over s over negative 1 over s squared. So this is going to cancel with that. We have limit s goes to 0 of negative s equals 0. So this is going to disappear. That means that our integral evaluates to pi over 2. Pretty nice. So again, integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine x over x squared dx equals pi over 2. And now let's look at one other method that we can use to solve this. So originally when I saw this integral, I thought of applying uh, Lobachevsky's, in, uh, Lobachevsky's integral formula, which I saw from a Mass 505 video, which I'll link as a card right here. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't really work out so great. I mean, we, we can't actually use it, but it's easier to just recognize this as another common integral. So. What I was trying to do is 1 minus cosine x over x squared dx. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 1 plus cosine x on the top and bottom. And what's going to happen is that's going to turn this into cosine squared, which is the same as sine squared. Right? And then we're going to end up with just this extra factor on the bottom of 1 over 1 plus cosine x. And my original thought was to apply Lobachevsky's formula. And in order to do that, we're going to do this cool trick. Um, in order to get rid of this nastiness, what we can do is we can set x equals to u. And some magic is going to happen right here. So watch what happens. dx equals 2 du. So 2 integral from 0 to infinity. Now for this sine squared, we're going to apply the trig identity sine squared of 2u is going to be um, 
2 sine u cosine u all squared. So we'll just multiply that out. And then we're still going to have this factor of 1 plus cosine 2u. This is going to cancel with this. And here's the cool part. If we have cosine squared of u over 1 plus cosine 2u, uh, cosine 2u is the same as 2 cosine squared of u minus 1 because of trig identities. And so this is equal to cosine squared of u, 2 cosine squared u plus 1 minus 1, right? So these cancel, and this ends up, just ends up being 1 half, right? So since this bit is equal to 1 half, it's all going to cancel with this. And so we end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of sine squared of u over u squared du, which is famously equal to pi over 2. And why don't we go ahead and prove that right now, too, because there's no reason why not to, right? So let's go ahead and prove that. So we're going to do this using Feynman integration. A pretty classic method. You've probably already seen this. So if you have, just go ahead and thanks for watching up to this point. I hope you enjoyed the video. But for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, yeah, we'll go over this again. So we're going to do i prime of a. We're going to differentiate on both sides, and we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of x, first of all, from the chain rule. And then we're going to end up with 2 sine of ax and then cosine of ax all over x squared. So this is going to cancel with the squared right here. And of course, this means that i prime of a equals integral from 0 to infinity of, using the trig identity, sine of 2ax over x dx. And so this is also pretty famous. This is You can also do it using a different form of Feynman integration. But essentially, as long as a is greater than 0, then this integral equals pi over 2. So that means i prime of a equals pi over 2, which means that i of a equals pi over 2a plus c. But if we plug in a equals 0, we know that i of 0 equals 0 plus c. And we know that this is equal to 0 because we can see that the whole integrand will just be 0 across the entire domain. So that means c equals 0. And that means a of 1, i of 1 equals the integral we were looking for. And that's equal to pi over 2. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.